Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at a feature probably not used a lot in, in Maya, but it's one of those that I think has some real advantages and can certainly be helpful with some of the modeling tasks when you're working for games or cinematics and things like that. And that is deformation in Maya. Now in 3D Studio Max, it's the FFD box, the Freeform Deformation box. Maya doesn't have that specifically. It's you know Maya has a different name for everything. Uh, same with depending on how you look at it for Max, it's Max has a different name for everything. But it ends up being basically the same thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to create what is essentially a Freeform Deformation box, but in Maya. And they they have it just called as a deformation. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Let's go ahead in our, in our polygons tab. We're going to select the cylinder. We're going to click and drag to create the width, and then click and drag to create the height. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this in the viewport, and that was just with spacebar. Well, we've got a lot of subdivisions. We have 20 for the the subdivisions around, but we obviously don't have a whole lot of subdivisions for edge loops and we need we do need to make sure we have a bunch of edge loops or it's not going to work really well so let's go ahead and go to our poly cylinder tab and here you can see we have our subdivisions and our subdivisions height okay for this i'm going to change 20 to 14 and we'll change 1 to let's call it 6 okay so now we have nice polys, nice edges. We have enough to work with where when we start to deform this, we can in fact make sure it's going to look good rather than really wonky if it had been just a single subdivision. All right, now to find the freeform deformation box or the lattice in Maya, we nearly we have to click the deformation tab right here. So if I click it, there's a bunch of different things here, but we just want to look at the first thing. The first thing is the lattice. That's our freeform deformation box. Let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it brings up a really nice generic kind of lattice that sits outside of our cylinder and, of course, takes up most of the space of it. It's a little low poly, or the subdivisions are a little low. I mean, we have four subdivisions here. I can live with that, but obviously we only ha we have no subdivisions vertically uh, none on the X and Y I guess if you look at it that way so we need to change that so let's click on the lattice shape and as you can see we have the five subdivisions which is right here five subdivisions but we only have two subdivisions here and here we want to change that I'm going to change that to three and that one to three as well so now if I look from the top there we go so now what that means is I can affect vertices over here and pull them out and it won't affect the vertices over here, all right? Now, you can't just get into it. It, it. If I hit the F8, obviously I can get into the sub object on the cylinder itself. That doesn't get me into the lattice. So to go into the lattice, what we need to do is select it and we need to right click and select this, lattice point. If we select that, now you can see we have control points on our model and on the lattice so that we know we can affect big areas or small areas or whatever we need to. Let's go ahead and just grab a couple. I'm going to grab these right here. All right, And let's just go ahead and move them around. Now as you can see, just moving it around, it affected a big area. It's nice. It actually w affected these three edge loops and started to affect just a little bit here. Now, the more subdivisions you have for your lattice is the less area it's going to be affected, mainly because, you know, we're not stretching stuff as far as we need to. In other words, let me show you real quickly. Let's change this to, say, to 2. Hit Enter. Okay. Now, if I'm grabbing that same one vertice and I'm moving it, you'll notice it affects a whole great area now because we don't have as many subdivisions on the lattice. So I, you can affect bigger areas with less subdivisions on the lattice than you would otherwise. 
I'll go ahead and put this back. Let's just do it for five. We're good there. All right. So I can affect things a, di a little different way. I can select right on through. Okay. So I can pull that out, for instance. There you go. It's kind of a nice soft selection. The really nice thing is I can I can hold my control key and I can deselect these edges here. So I can pull out just that center point area and you can see it does try to work a soft selection on that as well I can grab the top two sections and same controls W is move E is rotate and R is scale I'm gonna rotate I'm gonna hit E and I can rotate on a particular axis and then I can move it there you go I can then hold my shift and grab these hit E to rotate and I can rotate some more hit W to move and as you can see very quickly very simply I'm affecting the shape of this model through using the lattice of course you can you can move things directionally as you need to you can warp them as you need to I mean let's say we'll just grab this and we're going to move this out a little bit like we did as we were moving stuff around anyway uh, I would, Grab this a little, make it so it smooths out a little bit. I'm sorry, right here. Let's move that out a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right. So I can now then go into my sub optic as I need to, for instance, and I can affect polys here. And it is it takes a little bit of a warping on it because it, it does have basically what it would be would be considered a modifier stacked on it. What I can look to do, I'll hit F8, what I can look to do is go to edit, delete by type, and delete history. That deleted the deformation that we had on top of this model. Okay. The nice thing is is we can now then add another lattice but it does it's not like it reforms completely around it it is now looking at this object as a com something completely new and completely different I can now go ahead and once again add in an extra subdivision and I can right click go to lattice point I can then go ahead and grab these points here and move them way out grab these ones down here and move them out oops here we go there we go. Can grab all of these and move them. Grab all of this and move it over. But as you can see, it's a nice way to quickly, if you needed to have something that was really uniquely shaped, using the deformation lattice in Maya would be a perfect way to do it. And when you're done, edit, delete by type, history. Try that again. Sorry, I was out of it. There we go. Edit, delete by type, history. And you could then model from here. You could turn around and, you know, if this was the stack on something or something sci fi. But it's very quick and very easy to create some very unique shapes as you need to using the lattice, this lattice, underneath the deformation tab in Maya. Again, it's, it's basically the freeform deformation box in 3D Studio Max. And it's just as easy, basically. Anyway, I hope this has been fun for you. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3DMotive.com. Thanks for watching.